to our Sunday's worship on the 10th Sunday after Pentecost, the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time on August 16th, 2020. A colic for, for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be us for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 45, beginning with the first verse. Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant of the on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son, Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, and you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have, I will provide for you there. Since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored, honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept while Benjamin wept upon his neck and he kissed all his brothers, and wept upon them, and after that his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon and fall, that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Our epistle comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 11, beginning with the first verse and jumping ahead a bit. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they now, having been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn. Jesus, Jesus, precious. 
how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus. Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him. I'm so glad I learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him all. Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. The Gospel of the Lord, coming from the Gospel of Matthew, 15th chapter, beginning with the 10th verse. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles And the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? Jesus answered, Every plant that my father, that my heavenly father has not planted, will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. And then he said, Are you still also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But she did not, but he did not understand her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Some great readings, as always. I just really like the Bible. Is it me? (laughs) I think one of the things that's happened this summer also is that this constant um, engagement with our scriptures. I myself am recording this days before Sunday so that we can put in the music and add the graphics and all the other fancy things that we in video do. But I really do appreciate this fact that because it also forces me to engage the texts more intentionally. 
Uh, you can look around and see I'm not in my typical spaces. I'm actually recording this in my office at Gannon. And I have my peace flags above me and my, my, uh, the wall hanging of Era, the goddess of Ireland. Don't worry. <laughs> She's supposedly a, a great inspiration to many. And I appreciate that, that image. But I have been reading more Bible and engaging more texts and participating more because I feel like I have the time to do so. Even though we have returned to in-person teaching and online teaching, kind of in a hybrid way here at Gannon, I do still find myself with a little bit of time. Even though I've started my doctoral program and I'm taking courses in that as well, I am still finding that I want to engage Scripture in a very special way. Our colleague today says that we want to follow Christ. We want to do what Christ says and does. In our gospel, Jesus is teaching us about putting our money where our mouth is, but also putting our faith where it needs to be. Sometimes we get hung up on all of the minutia, the, the details of all of the laws and all of the stipulations and all of the purities that the Old Testament had. And many, many of them were in place literally to help protect us. We don't wear masks because there's a there's some kind of commandment that says so. We wear masks today, for example, because we are caring for the other and protecting one another. Jesus is saying, it's what comes out of your mouth, not what you put in it. Don't worry about what you eat or how clean your hands are, although please wash your hands. <laughs> but put your emphasis on what you say and what you do. The evil that comes from your heart, that comes out of your mouth, the vitriol we see thrown at one another. And we're going to see more of it as we approach November 3rd from both sides of the aisle, from both candidates for the White House and for many other locals as well. It's very interesting, the things we say about one another. But Jesus invited us to not say evil, but to do good. He even had trouble with this wonderful Canaanite woman and her daughter. He believed, and this is again from the Gospel of Matthew, that he was sent to take care of the lost tribe of Israel, of Judah, but the people who were faithful who had fallen away. The Canaanite woman was outside of that world. And so he didn't really see her as the object of his interest. But she convinced him, certainly through her own faith, please, I trust you. And look, even dogs get crumbs from their master's table. Can't you throw me a crumb? That insistence, that faith is ultimately what changed the mind of Christ. Could Christ change his mind? Certainly. Certainly. He was, after all, fully God and fully human. And like most humans, we also make some mistakes. The great reading from Joseph invites us into that place as well. A place of forgiveness from Joseph's perspective, but also a place of transformation on the part of the brothers. Last week, as we had our Mass on the Grass or our Prayer in the Air or whatever we're calling our Sunday worship outdoors at St. Stephen's, we talked about the pain and suffering that, jo 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 um, that Joseph was put through by his brothers. And now he had to make that transformation. And here we're reminded that it's not just his own transformation. It's also the transformation that God has allowed him to have. Yes, the brothers sold him into slavery. But as a result of that horrible thing, Joseph had a chance to become, to be, to surprise, to supply, to be engaged for Pharaoh and for the people of Egypt. And in turn then for his own family. Not that all suffering has to be endured so that something good comes from it. And not that we should perpetuate suffering and oppression because we think it's going to lead to something good from God. That's not at all what we're saying. But Joseph says, on the other side of it is a place of truth and honesty and reconciliation. As I said last weekend, our whole purpose, according to our mission, according to our catechism, is to reconcile ourselves, ourselves and one another to God and then to each other. That reconciliation requires a great deal of changing minds, changing directions. Our colleagues has followed Jesus. 
if Jesus can change his mind and reach out and heal the Canaanite woman's daughter, then certainly we too are capable of great change. What in your life needs to be changed? What prejudices or biases or things you've ignored that need your attention have you not done, have you not addressed? Jesus invites us into that place. Allow us to follow in his blessed steps and allow us to live a most holy life. Amen. We continue with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people. As the south sights, sounds, and smells of summer delight our eyes, ears, and noses, let us praise our God, saying, Make your word a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. God of faith, you called us to share the good news of salvation. Grant us the gift of faith to fulfill our mission. We pray for Justin, Michael, Sean, Kathy, and Sean, make your word a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. God of mercy, you called us to live in peace with one another. Grant the nation and our leaders the gift of knowing what things they ought to do and the grace and power to faithfully accomplish them. We pray for Donald, Thomas, Joseph, Kathy. Make your word a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. God of hope, you called us to care for your creation. Grant us the gift of wisdom to tend the plants, yielding seed and trees bearing fruit, the cattle in kind, the creeping things and wild animals of every kind. Make your word a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. God of goodness, you called us to welcome all as you welcome us. Grant us the gift of seeing Christ in all people and act accordingly for the common good. Make your word a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. God of grace, you called each of us to be members of the body of Christ. Grant the gift of healing to physicians and nurses, to priests and counselors, to social workers and deacons, to teachers and their aides, to police and first responders, and to all who pray and care for the suffering. We pray for, and I invite your own special intentions. Make your word a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. God of glory, Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else, and all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. Christ Jesus, give rest to, and I invite you to name the sh- share the names of those who have passed. Make your word a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. We thank you for... And I invite your prayers and thanksgivings. Make your word a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. God of hope, we give this week into your hands. Make us ever mindful of your loving presence in good times as well as bad. And make your word a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. And now our hymn. Crystal tide forever flowing by. 
Thank you again, Kate. We continue with the Lord's Prayer in our traditional language. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you, embrace you with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Our general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Jesus. We want to receive you in our hearts, and we cannot do so in the sacramental way. Therefore, we ask you to come to us, fill us with your presence, your peace, and your love. Grant us, Lord, the graces we need most. Amen. May the blessing of the light be on you, light within and light without. May the blessed sunshine shine upon you and warm your heart till it glows like a great peat fire so the stranger may come in and warm himself at it, and also a friend. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.